All right, let's get down into the molecular level of the skeletal system. So what's actually making the bone? How does it get hard? And really what we need to focus on is this extracellular matrix. So this is what's surrounding those widely separated cells. And we'll talk about the cells more in the next section. But if you've ever seen a histological slide of bone tissue, you'll have this very distinct kind of darker area right here. And then you'll see these ever expanding rings. So very, like a tr very similar to what you see in terms of tree rings. And what's actually making up all of this? Let's talk about that in a bit more detail. And you can see some stats right here on the slide. So about 15% of water, so like most things. But what I want us to focus on really are these collagen fibers and these mineral salts. So collagen fibers, this is going to be the organic material of the extracellular matrix. And this is going to be secreted by certain cells referred to as osteo blasts. So anytime you see this term blast, you know that something is being secreted. In this case, we're talking about the organic material. And then about 55% of the extracellular matrix is going to be composed of inorganic materials or those minerals, specifically hydro... and I always misspelled this, so I'm going to make sure I do it right. Hydroxyapatite. So this is what's going to harden with the presence of these collagen fibers. So it's important to note that you're not going to have the hardness of the bone without the presence of the organic material, so those secretions of the osteoblasts. Now when you think about it, why would you have collagen? Why would you have this component that supposedly is going to make the bone kind of softer? because when, with that minerals, that's what's really making it structurally sound very strong. But just as important, you need these collagen fibers in order to prevent against stent, uh, tensile pressures, okay? So important in terms of not allowing the bone to shatter. So you need a little bit of flexibility in the bone in order to deal with the shocks that can come from movement. And that's what the collagen fibers are really doing. So really resistance of being torn apart. And you can actually do experiments with bones. If you uh, put a bone in a vat, say of acid, and you know, get rid of all the mineral, you can see how flexible the bone can be. You can actually move the bone around because all that's left in there is going to be those organic materials or the collagen fibers. Whereas if you didn't have collagen fibers, you would have this really brittle bone. So equally fragile. So you need both components to really get the structurally sound and capable of movement bone or skeletal system that we have. So that's just an intro in terms of the extracellular matrix. In our next uh, presentation, we're going to talk about the actual cells.